Today we're going to be testing Epsom salt in this old golf cart battery. This is a Trojan T105. It usually sits around 5.9 volts, but then after a day it goes down to 5.85 volts. Right, right now it's still a little bit high for me charging it. This solar panel puts about 5 amps into it. It's not connected up right now though. Now this battery, if you actually do a discharge test, the last time I tested it, it had 53.5 amp hours. It's supposed to have, I think, 225 amp hours. Well, anyway, this battery doesn't get high enough in voltage. If I charge it, it only goes to 6.4 volts. It doesn't like to go very high. So I'm going to see about adding some Epsom salt to increase the reactivity of the electrolyte, and maybe that'll help the battery stay at a higher voltage. That won't desulfate it, but, it, but it'll help it stop from sulfating, because the higher the voltage of the battery, the less sulfation builds up. While we're mixing up the Epsom salt solution, let's let this battery charge. So now to make the Epsom salt solution. First off, I take a 1,000 milliliter or 1 liter boiling flask. It doesn't have to be a boiling flask. It could be, it could be an Erlenmeyer flask or something, or just a cup. And anyway, I fill it with some hot water, and I have it on my stirring plate. We'll add this in there. It's a magnet. So now, whenever I turn on the stirring plate, it rotates that magnet. And finally, the last ingredient, Epsom salt. I know I'm making a mess, but whatever. As you can see, it's very white right now because it hasn't fully mixed. I'll let that sit for a little bit until it goes clear. Well, this looks pretty good. Now we have our electrolyte solution. So the battery's at about 6.4 volts. Let's move this. Let's add the electrolyte. I seal this back up, and I want to slosh the electrolyte around to make sure it mixes. This may lower the voltage. Nope, it hasn't. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I say let's let it sit for about an hour or so, so it can charge. Well, it's been out here for two hours, and the shadow is well past the solar panels. Let's unhook the solar panels and see where the voltage goes down to. It looks like the voltage is happy at 5.94 volts. Now it's time for the discharge test.
Okay, so here we have the Trojan T105 in my shed, hooked up to my IMAX B6, which is being powered by this 12-volt SLA. We have it set to the PB discharge. So th what this will be doing is it will be discharging one amp of current from this battery and just turning it into heat. But it will be counting up how much power is being pulled from it. It should take about two days to discharge this. Let's start. And right there, it should be counting up the milliamp hours. It's already used up one milliamp hour right there. We'll let that do its thing and come back to it. So it's been two days and... Oh no. Only 24 amp hours this time. That's not good. Mm. The battery is sitting at 5.63 volts. That's definitely discharged. We'll let that charge. Well, this video has been quite a headache to film. It's been two weeks since the past clip. I have charged and discharged this battery about five times. It's always come out about 23 amp hours, so at least that's consistent. I burned up my charger, messed up a battery. I've had to do it so many times that I've had to just spend a lot of time on this, but I have discharged it and charged it, and I have made this a longer experiment. Unfortunately, it hasn't seemed to show any results, none whatsoever. The battery still settles down to 5.94 volts after about an hour from charging it, and then it slowly goes back down to 5.8 volts after a few hours later. It gives about 23 amp hours, which last May it gave 53 amp hours. So that means that it is slowly getting worse it's, it, because it's such a, it, it can only be such a low voltage. But this battery is a very odd battery because no matter how much power I put into it, it's very difficult to get it to go above like 6.5 volts. It just converts all the energy into heat after that. So that's very interesting. Epsom salt does not seem to have had any effect on this battery, but it's a battery I got off the recycling skid, so that's okay. Very interesting results, though. I think if I was wanting to have results that were more definitive, I might want to actually get a battery that is a little bit more usual, because this battery does have a couple odd properties to it just about how it's voltage and mostly about how the more you charge it it doesn't go high enough where a lot of batteries i know of like for instance if you had one of these that was dead and you charged it and it wasn't very it didn't have a lot of capacity it would just go up in voltage a lot not as we get stopped in voltage so it's very interesting epsom salt didn't fix this battery but oh well hope you guys enjoyed this video and thanks for watching see ya